Welcome and Happy New Year. I'm Jessica Laughlin, and it's my privilege to serve this congregation as the Director of Lifespan Religious Education as we try and strive to live out our mission to embrace freedom, love inclusively, grow in mind, body, and spirit, and help heal out our world. Let us pause before we start to recognize and respect the peoples of the Peoria Nation, whose ancestors welcomed and assisted the first Europeans to visit this place, the Peoria's traditional homeland, the very ground upon which we gather this morning. Thank you for joining us in person and online. It's an act of courage to seek connection and a larger purpose in this age, and we welcome you. If you're new, please help us get to know you. Stay for visiting in the Zoom room after service. Or if you're in person, we'll have coffee, connection, and this week even some crafting in Fellowship Hall. If you're not physically in the sanctuary with us this morning, but joining us on Zoom or Facebook, you may want to take a moment before we get too far along and locate a small rock or totem that fits nicely in the palm of your hand. We'll be working with a physical touchstone a little later in the worship. Today's worship is for all ages. All of us are welcome here in whatever way it is that we arrive. If your littles need more space, we have a rug to crawl or play on near the organ. 
as one option. And if you need more of a break, there's childcare, or you can hear the service in Fellowship Hall as well. The theme for worship and religious education this month is finding our center. Today, you're invited to intentionally place a touchstone for the year at your center. Over the following weeks, we'll look inside at the center of both ourselves and our Unitarian Universalist faith. Now, just a few brief announcements. As the COVID risk levels in the Tri-County area have come down recently, as assessed by the covidactnow.org website, we are currently strongly rec recommending masks in our sanctuary and at church events, but they are not currently required. Also, we're wrapping up our second order of UU Church of Peoria merchandise. If you want a hoodie to make it through the winter months, a tote bag or a t-shirt with the church's welcome home logo, um, we invite you to get that order in ASAP. And then next Saturday, January 7th, we have a potluck with our minister emeritus, Michael Brown, and his wife, Diane, as they'll be in the Chicago and central Illinois area visiting friends. Um, so come out and join us next Saturday. Make sure to sign up. Finally, there's just about five spots left for our MLK luncheon that the church has two tables reserved. So if you'd like to join us, reserve your spot now, $60 a seat. And now is a great time to go ahead and turn your devices to worship mode. That would be to silent or buzzy as you prefer. This time, I'd like to invite up Reverend Mark Marcus Foliano to assist me with this next part. Marcus is currently serving as the project manager at the office of the president of the UUA, and they have recently returned to Peoria from Chicago. So we are blessed to have them in attendance and helping with worship today. Thank you, Marcus. All right. If everybody could please rise in body or spirit as you're able and prepare to join us in singing hymn 389. We'll be doing song as a round this morning, which is always fun. We'll see what develops. Edith will play through on the organ while we listen one time. Next, all of us will sing one verse together. Then I will take this half of the sanctuary and we'll start, and we'll sing it two times through. Marcus, we'll take that half of the sanctuary, and you'll join in after the first line, and also sing two times through. Edith will play one more time to close us out. And we'll see what we create together.
Good morning. Our opening reading today is In This New Year by Aaron Stockwell. In this new year, let us be amazed. Let us search for new life and hope in our midst. Let us nurture creativity in every form. Let us be reminded that new insights of the universe are always being made. In this new year, let us be amazed. I'd like to invite the Smetsru family up uh, to light the chalice. The Chalice Lighting for the New Year by Lisa Doge. For the new year, just days old, beginning today, always beginning, we light our chalice, symbol of faith, perseverance, and hope, in astonished thanksgiving and irrepressible praise. For beginnings that emerge out of endings, appear amidst cont continuity, become visible in hindsight, we light our chalice, symbol of faith, perseverance, and hope, and astonished thanksgiving and an irrepressible praise. For all the times and all the ways we have begun anew together, we light our chalice, symbol of faith, perseverance, and hope, and astonished thanksgiving and irrepressible praise. family. Let us take a moment to acknowledge our gratitude for this church. One of the ways that we express, express this gratitude is through our offering. With our gifts freely given, may we say yes to the values of our faith. May our offering help us practice Unitarian Universalism within and beyond this congregation. It is our practice to give away some of our gifts to help each other and others outside of our walls. We share half of the non-pledge offering with another group each month. And our first recipient in 2023 is Lula NFP. Lula, L-U-L-A, -L -L is a Peoria outreach team that provides food, temporary shelter, clothing, sleeping bags, blankets, bus passes, and other items crucial for survival of people living outside, on the streets, or in tent encampments. All have experienced significant trauma in their lives, and most suffer with some form of mental illness. Lula also provides assistance in navigating available resources, such as housing and medical care. They receive no government funding and rely solely on donations. They are a 501c3 charitable organization. So as you add your offering to the plate, please indicate if your offering is part of your pledge. Otherwise, it will be counted in the loose offering and half will go to Lula. The ushers will pass along the plates during the music for meditation. After the plates have gone by and I light the first candles, all are welcome to come and light candles of care. These candles we light because we all have joys and sorrows, names and milestones in our heart within the embrace of the whole church. Will the ushers please come forward? Thank mm -hmm. you.
Allow me now to share some joys and concerns in the hearts and minds of our congregation. We offer our heartfelt sympathy to all family and friends of Larry Miller, who passed on December 27th. We offer our concern and support to Pat Cofield and his family as Pat's sister Mary Ann enters hospice care. And we send good wishes to Carol Lowe as she settles into her new apartment at Lutheran Hillside Village. And finally, let us savor the great joy of the winter holiday season that we're in the midst of and the celebration of the new year that's before us. From a winter solstice ritual, a candlelit Christmas Eve service, a presence and PJ-filled Christmas Day brunch, and finally, this New Year's Day service. We have been a church full of moments of joy, solemnity, reflection, and celebration. Thank you for sharing your holiday with us. And another moment of quiet while I light the candles for the joys and sorrows, names and milestones that remain in our hearts and unspoken. Blessed be. Please rise and body your spirit as you're able and join us in singing hymn number 123, Spirit of Life by Caroline McDade. <laughs> So grateful to be with you all this morning, on this first day of the year 2023. Uh, as was mentioned earlier, I'm the Reverend Marcus Foliano. I serve as the project manager to the Office of the President of the Unitarian Universalist Association. Uh, in this new year, we are beginning the uh, six months of transition within the Office of the President as uh, the UUA will elect a new president at the General Assembly this year. So I'm grateful to be able today to share the words of our current president, the Reverend Susan Dr. Frederick Gray, on this morning. Inviting the New Year by Reverend Susan Frederick Gray. This winter, I have been thinking a lot about the idea of New Year, the image of one year dying and another born, of Father Time dancing upon the old year, of the Roman god Janus, with two faces, the god of transitions, thresholds, and looking both to the past and to the future. This threshold marks, as it is by our calendar, is an opportunity for reflection and intention. A reminder, if you will, to reset and recalibrate ourselves as we begin a new year. 
Our most familiar and common celebrations of the new year are rituals of revelry and forgetfulness that often turn into gluttony and waste. And yet, what is most needed in this time of transition, of threshold moments, is reflection and mindfulness. Indeed, there are many ways to forget, but a path of spiritual growth, of maturity and wisdom, is one rooted in reflection and intention. The New Year threshold invites us to look back, to acknowledge the joys and the heartbreak, the unfinished work, the grief, the successes and new gifts we have received and known this past year. And it invites us to claim our intentions and our hope for the new year, to recommit ourselves to the works that feed us and to lit and to the lives, the lives we hope for, to the commitment that needs our attention and plant the intention seeds we hope to see grow in our lives and our world. UU Minister Scott uh, Prinster writes, we, wa uh, we wander amid the rubble of a world that is always crumbling and rebuilding, carrying hearts that are consistently breaking and renewing. And so we gather to renew our hope and strength for the works that await us. We gather to be attentive, to meet our lives with wakefulness of heart and spirit, open to the brokenness, the suffering, and open to the unconditional presence of hope and love that keep our hearts renewing, the, and plant, that plant the seeds for rebuilding. And so it is that the new year is a call not for forgetfulness, but for wakefulness, to alertness to see more clearly and openly the places in ourselves and our world that are broken, full of sorrow, and attentive to the intention to renewal that is also waiting. For there is courage and strength in letting our hearts be broken by suffering, yet renewed by hope and the knowledge that we walk with and work with others to rebuild and renew. The new year feels like a great gift of time. The expanse of the year opens before us, but in reality, the true gift is each moment. The time we give, the gifts we hold, is not in the future, just as it's not in the past. It's the present. The year will unfold for us moment by moment, the time always being right now. So one of the best ways to welcome this new year, this gift of time, is to, is to cultivate mindfulness and attention to the present. The, to the gift of each moment. One of the ways we can do this is through intention. An image that invites more intention is that of the touchstone. Historically, a touchstone is a type of dark stone used to judge the quality of purity of gold and silver. By definition today, a touchstone refers to a standard by which a judgment by, uh, might be made I understand a touchstone as something that calls us back to our intention, to our value, to what is important. Coming to services weekly with time, with time becomes a touchstone in our lives, a way of recalibrating, of reminding what we value most, of being renewed to the threshold of the new week, a place to tend our souls. A regular practice of mindfulness can be a touchstone, putting us in touch with the joy and love that is a million times greater than the surface of our daily living that we might share and be led by this love and joy more fully. A touchstone can be a practice or a quality that you wish to cultivate and carry with you more intentionally in your daily life. There, is just, there just so happens to be a story about touchstones. This story begins in a book. I invite Jordan Thomas up to read The Touchstone, a short story included in 100 Wisdom Stories 
from around the world by Margaret Schiff. When the great library of Alexandria burned, the story goes, one book was saved, but it was not a valuable book. And so a poor man who could read a little bought it for a few coppers. The book wasn't very interesting, but between its pages, there was something very interesting indeed. It was a thin, a thin strip of parchment on which was written the secret of the touchstone. The touchstone was a small pebble that could turn any common metal into pure gold. The writing explained that it was lying among thousands and thousands of other pebbles that looked exactly like it. But the secret was this, the touchstone would feel warm while ordinary pebbles are cold. So the man sold his few belongings, bought some simple supplies, camped on the seashore and began testing pebbles. He knew that if he picked up ordinary pebbles and threw them down again, because they were cold. He might pick up the same pebble hundreds of times. So when he felt one that was cold, he threw it into the sea. He spent a whole day doing this, but none of the pebbles he picked up was the touchstone. Yet he went on and on this way, picked up a pebble, cold, threw it in the sea, picked up another, cold, threw it into the sea, picked up another, cold, threw it into the sea. The days stretched into weeks and the weeks into months, one day, however, about mid-afternoon, he picked up a pebble and it was warm. He threw it into the sea before he realized what he had done. He had formed such a strong habit of picking up each pebble and immediately throwing it into the sea that when the one he wanted came along, he still threw it away. And so it is with our lives when we wander through our lives without mindfulness, without wakefulness, following habits, letting each day flow almost without notice into the next. We may never realize the opportunities, the precious gifts that have been, that are, that are right in front of us. Thank you for that telling, Jordan. <sighs> Well, guess what? Today, we have some touchstones for you. They aren't touchstones that will turn objects into gold. They are touchstones that are meant to be filled with your intention for your new year. Something that you, that we might hold on to or go back to when we feel ourselves lost, overwhelmed, or drawn on too much by habit. The ushers will now help pass out some touchstones. Everybody should select one they especially like or feel called to. And Edith will play some reflective music to help us get to the mindset we need.
Take a look at your rock. It's yours. You selected it. They were each different. And this one ended up with you. Let us fill our stones with our intention. Kathleen McTeague reminds us that the 1st of January is another day dawning. Yet also we stand at a threshold, the new year, something truly new, still unformed, leaving a stunning power in our hands. What shall we do with this great gift, this gift of time, this year, Let us begin by remembering that whatever justice, whatever peace, whatever wholeness might bloom in our world this year, we are the hearts and minds, the hands and feet, the embodiment of all the best visions of our people. As you hold your touchstone in your palm, I invite you to think about an intention you wish to carry with you into this new year. A touchstone might be breathe, to remind us to take a breath when we feel overwhelmed, when we get moving too quickly, whether physically or in thought, to be attentive to our surroundings, to our loved ones, to call ourselves out to the present moment. Maybe our touchstone is hope. We wander in a world that is constantly crumbling. It is easy to become discouraged. In these moments, our touchstone may remind us that life is never without hope. That people, just as human as we are, have faced terrible obstacles and found ways to build roads of hope and compassion May your touchstone remind you to rekindle the light of hope and carry its strength through the year. An intention you may wish to bring to your touchstone could be practice, a commitment to make a regular space for meditation, for worship, for quiet, to help you keep the discipline of a practice throughout the year, that it might keep us attentive and awake to our lives. Perhaps your touchstone is love or compassion, a reminder that when you find yourself growing judgmental, angry, cutting off, to open your heart, to see the light in another human. A touchstone to call us to right relationship, connection, when we feel walls growing around our hearts to open them more fully. Maybe I haven't named your touchstone yet. That's okay. Listen to your heart. It will tell you. What is the intention you wish to carry into this new year? In this quiet, let us all take a moment, a moment to listen for the intention we wish to bring to this new year. Now, let us Place symbolically symbolically these stones, that intention, that they might serve us as a reminder, calling us back to our intention. If you wish, you may speak aloud, practice, love, or silently. Place your rock in the palm of your hand. Maybe you're called to warm it between your palms. Share the heat of your body with your touchstone. 
Maybe you want to hold it against your heart space. Maybe you simply want to hold it in your hand. This touchstone is yours to hold throughout your year. You can return to it whenever you need a reminder of your intention. Sometimes I carry one in my pocket so I can reach my fingers around it when I need it. Sometimes I set it on a small altar at home, a place that I know I'll see and be reminded of daily. Your touchstone could be your private practice that you keep to yourself. It could be one that you share out loud and check in about your intentions over the year. Feel free to leave your rock as it appears right now or embellish it as is meaningful to you. We will have some paint pens in Fellowship Hall if you wish to scribe your intention on it or add some adornment. Thank you for going on that journey with me. Now please rise in body or spirit as you're able and join me in singing hymn number 100 in the gray hymnal. I've got peace like a river. Let me invite up Regina Stanley as we send our light out into the world. We are the Unitarian Universalists. This is the Church of the Open Mind. This is the Church of the Loving Heart. This is the Church of the Helping Hands. This is our church.
So I'll leave you with the words that Kathleen McTeague uses to end her reading on New Year. The new year can be new ground for the seeds of our dreams. Let us take this step forward together onto new ground, planting our dreams well, faithfully, and in joy. Our worship has ended. Let our service begin. Thank you.